Right. So imagine a future, right, where national security trumps like all those privacy concerns we hear about. And the U.S. and China are in this like massive tech arms race to, you know, to dominate AI. And this isn't some like, you know, sci-fi movie we're talking about. This is the future Peter Thiel he's betting on. And he's, you know, he's actively working to make it happen. Yeah. And what's fascinating about Thiel is he's not just some Silicon Valley, you know, yeah. tech investor. Right? It's not just about profits for him. Right. Right. It's his uh, it's his philosophy. Yeah. That libertarian philosophy really shapes his whole approach to AI. Mm. Like it's more about power and control you know, than just the the technology itself. Okay, so he's not just like, you know, disrupting traditional systems like he did with PayPal, right? right. AI, he's looking to shape like the whole fabric of society. And Palantir, that company he co-founded, it seems like they're a major player in all this. Absolutely. I mean, look at Palantir's platforms. You've got Gotham, you've got Foundry. It's Teal's security first approach in action. Like these platforms are used by agencies like the CIA, the FBI to just, you know, go through mountains of data, predict behavior, extract insights that, I mean, humans couldn't process on their own. Yeah, yeah. And it raises a kind of a big question, right? At what point does this pursuit of security cross the line into mass surveillance. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's a little unsettling. But how does Teal square that with, like, you know, with his libertarian beliefs? Because libertarianism is all about individual liberty, right? Mm. But this sounds like less freedom, not more. It is. It's the paradox of Teal's position. He does believe in individual liberty, but he also believes in order and stability. So for him, AI isn't just about, like, individual empowerment. It's about maintaining control, even if it means, you know, giving up a little privacy for the sake of collective security. So it's like freedom through control almost. Yeah. Which is very different from, you know, from those who see AI as this great democratizing force. Exactly. And for Teal, this isn't just some theory, you know. He's putting his money where his mouth is, literally. Like yeah. his investment strategy, it's not just throwing money at any AI startup. It's very carefully choosing companies that align with his vision for this, you know, security driven future. So it's about more than just profit, right? It's about building this network, this influence to push his agenda forward. Precisely. And a good example is DeepMind. Teal, he was an early investor, even before Google acquired them. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, making waves with AI that could master these complex games like Go. Right. And for Teal, it wasn't just about games. It was about showing that AI could surpass humans in really complex tasks. And, you know, for him, that has direct implications for natural global power dynamics, the whole thing. Yeah, so games were just the start. So what are some of the other companies in Teal's AI portfolio, and what do they tell us about, you know, his broader strategy? Well, there's Vicarious, for one. They're working on artificial general intelligence. Like, they're trying to build AI that can actually think and reason like a human, you know. It's a whole other level of ambition. Right. And potentially a whole other level of risk. Yeah, that's some next-level stuff right there. And this seems to tie back to that AI arms race that, that Teal keeps warning about, especially with China. Absolutely. He sees AI as this key battleground, right, in the global struggle for dominance. And he's been pushing for what he calls technological sovereignty, which basically means nations need to control their own AI destinies. Yeah. You know, instead of relying on, you know, potentially hostile foreign powers. So he's basically saying... Don't put all your AI eggs in one basket, especially if that basket is controlled by, you know, someone who doesn't share your values, your interests. Right. He believes that relying too much on foreign tech, particularly in those you know critical areas like AI, could be a huge mistake. Yeah. He sees this future where nations, they need to be self-sufficient in AI development, mm. you know, to ensure their security, their economic competitiveness, the whole nine yards. That's a pretty strong stance, especially coming from someone who made his fortune in, you know, in the globalized tech industry. But I'm guessing this vision, it hasn't been without its critics, especially when you think about, you know, the potential impact on on individual privacy, on civil liberties. You're right. His security first approach to AI, it sparked a lot of controversy. Critics, they worry about this dystopian surveillance state, you know, yeah. where AI is used to track our every move. Yeah. And they're concerned about bias in these systems, the erosion of privacy, the concentration of power in the hands of this, you know, tech elite. And to be honest, these are valid concerns. Yeah. So how does Teal respond to that? Does he does he acknowledge those potential downsides? He does. He acknowledges the risks. But he argues that the benefits, you know, of a more secure future outweigh those potential drawbacks to privacy. He believes AI can be a force for good, but it needs to be wielded responsibly. 
by governments, organizations that, you know, that share his values. So he's basically saying, trust me, I'll use this power for good. But how much faith are we willing to put in any one person, no matter how brilliant they are or, you know, how well intentioned? I think that's a question a lot of people are are wrestling with right now. It's a valid question. And it speaks to a bigger question about the future of AI. Like, who gets to decide how this technology is developed and used? And what kind of world are we creating if those decisions are made by people who, you know, who prioritize security and control above all else? Yeah. And that's where things start to get really interesting. And to be honest, a little bit scary. But before we, you know, spiral into an existential crisis here, let's let's take a closer look at how Teal's vision is actually playing out in the real world. We were just talking about, you know, those concerns about Teal's vision for AI and how it could impact, you know, individual liberties. Yeah, for sure. And and that kind of leads naturally to, to questions about the ethical implications of, of his work, right? Yeah, definitely. And speaking of implications, you know, we've been talking a lot about Palantir, about government agencies, but Teal's reach, it goes way beyond that, right? Like, how is he shaping AI in other sectors? Like, finance. I mean, he's got a ton of experience there, starting with PayPal. Oh, yeah, for sure. And think about PayPal, right? It completely disrupted, you know, traditional finance and that same disruptive energy. It's It's alive and well. In his AI investments today, he's he's pouring money into companies using AI to, you know, crunch financial data, assess risk, even predict market movements. Right. He sees AI as as the key to to unlocking this this whole new level of efficiency and profitability in finance. So it's not just about making money. It's about like outmaneuvering the competition, mm. you know, gaining a strategic edge. Which, yeah. you know, is very much in line with his his whole philosophy. Exactly. And it's not just finance. He's he's applying that same logic to to healthcare, energy, transportation, you name it, looking for any opportunity to use AI to you know, to optimize, predict, and ultimately control. So he's playing a high stakes game of chess with AI as his like his most powerful piece, basically. Yeah, that's, yeah. But, and I think this is a big but, like, where does ethics fit into all this? We talked about his, you know, utilitarian approach, but you could argue that his focus on security and control, it comes at a, at a real cost, you oh. know, to individual freedom and privacy. Right. And that's a huge point of contention in, you know, in the AI community right now. Yeah. Feels critics, they're, they're worried about this, this dystopian future, right? Yeah. Where, where AI is used to track and control our every move. Yeah. They're concerned about bias in these systems, the erosion of privacy, the concentration of power in the hands of a, you know, a tech elite. And to be honest, I mean, these are valid concerns. So how does Teal respond to to that kind of criticism? Does he does he even acknowledge the potential downsides of what he's talking about? He does. He he does acknowledge the risks, but he consistently argues that that the benefits of, you know, of a more secure future they they outweigh those potential privacy concerns. Okay. He he believes that AI can be a force for good, but but he really emphasizes the need for for responsible use by yeah. you know by governments and organizations that that align with with his values. It almost sounds like a trust me argument, you know? And and I'm not sure how comfortable I am with that no matter no matter how brilliant he is or how well intentioned. It raises this fundamental question about about who gets to decide how this technology is is developed and used and and what happens if, you know, if those decisions are are driven by this this desire for control above all else. That's that's the heart of the issue, isn't it? Like if if we allow AI to be shaped solely by those who, you know, who prioritize security and control, what what kind of future are we are we creating? Mm. And it's a question we can't afford to ignore, you know, as as AI becomes more powerful and more pervasive in our lives. Mm. All right. So, so so before we go, you know, full black mirror here, let's let's bring this back to, to Teal's vision for, for the future of AI. Where does he see this all heading? Like, what's the end game? Well, if you if you look at his actions, not just his words, it's it's pretty clear that Teal sees a future where where AI is is woven into the fabric of everyday life, you know, yeah. healthcare, finance, defense, governance. He he believes AI is going to be the driving force behind all of it, and and sooner than a lot of people think. So not just AI that can like you know write a catchy song or beat us at chess, but AI making decisions that that impact you know life and death, shaping shaping the course of history. It's it's both exciting and 
honestly a little a little terrifying. It is, and and that's why that's why Teal's vision is so polarizing, right? Some people they they see a dystopian future where where machines rule over humanity. Others see it as as this inevitable, even necessary evolution. Oh yeah, to, to tackle the world's biggest problems. And Teal seems to fall into the that latter camp, right? Yeah, I, I think so. He he talks about AI curing diseases, eradicating poverty, even achieving immortality. Mm -hmm. He he views AI as this tool to to overcome our human limitations and and build a better future. Right, but let's be real; it's a specific vision of better. Right, it's one <laughs> where where security and stability reign supreme. Yeah, even if it means some individual freedoms are you know are sacrificed for this for this so called greater good. Yeah, and his libertarian beliefs, his you know his faith in technology, his deep suspicion of government these all these all factor into his vision. So not a utopia for everyone then. Maybe maybe more like a utopia for those who you know, who value control and efficiency above all else. Yeah, it's 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 definitely a particular flavor of utopia. But I wouldn't I wouldn't oversimplify Thiel's perspective. I mean he's a complex thinker. Yeah. His vision it's it's full of contradictions. He he champions individual freedom, but he also believes in and a need for strong leadership. Mm -hmm. He's a capitalist who's skeptical of the free market, a technologist who's wary of technology's unintended consequences. It almost sounds like he wants to like have it both ways, you know? He wants the benefits of AI's power without the without the potential downsides. Maybe. Or maybe he's just, you know, trying to grapple with with this rapidly changing world where where the old rules don't apply anymore. Mm -hmm. A world that's being reshaped by technology at this at this incredible pace. Okay, so for those of us who aren't, you know, billionaires or philosophers, where where does this leave us? How how should we be thinking about AI and its its potential impact on our lives? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Got and, it? And ultimately it's it's one each of us has to answer for ourselves, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is to stay informed. To, to understand all the different visions for AI that are out there and, and to engage in the debate. I mean, yeah. the future of AI, it's not predetermined. We're, we're shaping it right now through our choices and action. Yeah, that's a good point. It's, it's easy to get caught up in the hype or the fear surrounding AI, but, but it's up to us to decide what kind of future we want, right? Do we want AI that's primarily used for surveillance and control or, or do we want it as a tool to, you know, empower individuals, encourage creativity, and solve social problems? These aren't easy questions, but they're, they're questions we can't afford to ignore. Exactly. AI is here to stay. It's, it's going to transform our world in ways we can't even you know, fully grasp yet. The question is, what kind of transformation do we want? What kind of future are we building? Those are questions worth worth thinking about for sure. And and maybe as we continue to, you know, explore the world of AI, we'll we'll find answers that are both hopeful and and realistic. That's the beauty of, you know, of a deep dive like this. It's it's not about finding all the answers. It's it's about asking the right questions. And about starting a conversation. Exactly. A conversation that that needs to happen now before before it's too late. Absolutely. So as we as we wrap up our deep dive into the world of Peter Thiel and AI, we'll we'll leave you with this. Think critically, question assumptions, and, and imagine the future you want to create. The future of AI is, is in our hands. That's a powerful thought to end on. Thanks for joining us on this journey. It's been a pleasure exploring these these complex issues with you. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and and keep imagining the possibilities. Okay, so we've we've spent a good amount of time unpacking, you know, Peter Thiel's vision for AI, this future where it's like totally integrated into our lives, you know, maybe even reshaping those global power dynamics. Mm -hmm. But what does that, you know, what does that actually look like in practice? Like where does Teal see all his, you know, his efforts actually leading? Well, if you, if you look at, you know, where he's putting his money, his investments and, and his public statements, it starts to become a little clearer. You know, he's, he's betting on this future where AI isn't just a tool. It's, it's like the underlying architecture of, of our world. You know, think about it. Healthcare, finance, defense, even governance. He believes all these sectors, they're going to be driven by AI in ways we can't even, you know, fully comprehend yet. So we're not just talking about like algorithms that, that can, you know, beat us at chess or, or automate some tasks. We're talking about AI making, you know, like life altering decisions, potentially right. shaping the course of, of history, which is, you know, it's both exciting and honestly a little a little scary right <laughs> it is and, and that's why you know it forces us to confront some pretty fundamental questions about about the role of technology in in society you know yeah. like will ai be used to empower humanity or or to control it will it will it amplify our creativity 
or or limit our choices you know yeah. these aren't these aren't easy questions but they're they're questions we've got to grapple with as ai gets more you know powerful and and more present in our lives and and teal himself you know he seems to have a a pretty clear vision of the future he wants to create he's he's talked about like the potential for ai to to cure diseases to eliminate poverty even even to achieve immortality like he sees ai as this way to to transcend our limitations and and build a better world but but is it a world everyone will want to live in you know that's the question that's the key question right mm-hmm. and and teal's vision of this better future it it definitely prioritizes security and stability even if it means you know, maybe some individual freedoms are are curtailed, you know, for the sake of the the collective good. And his libertarian beliefs, his his faith in technology, his like deep skepticism of of government, these all come together, you know, to to shape his perspective. So not a utopia for everyone, then maybe mm. maybe more like utopia for for those who you know value control and efficiency above all else. Yeah, it's it's a it's a particular type of utopia for sure. But I, I wouldn't want to, to oversimplify Teal's perspective. You know, yeah. he's, he's a complex thinker. And his vision, it's, it's full of these contradictions. Like he, he champions individual freedom, but then he also believes in this need for, for strong leadership. He's, he's a capitalist who's, who's kind of skeptical of the free market, a, a technologist who's, who's wary of technologies you know, unintended consequences. It almost sounds like he, he wants to have it both ways. You know, he wants the benefits of AI's power without, without those potential downsides. Maybe, or maybe he's, he's just, you know, really trying to, to grapple with this, this world that's changing so fast, you know, where the, the old rules don't apply a, a world that's being reshaped by, by technology at this, at this unbelievable pace. So I guess for those of us who aren't, you know, billionaires or philosophers, like, where does this leave us? How, how should we be thinking about AI and, and what it, you know, what it could mean for our lives? That, that's the million dollar <laughs> question, right? And, and ultimately it's, it's up to each of us to answer that for, for ourselves. But I can't emphasize enough how important it is to, to stay informed, to, to really understand all the different, you know, visions for AI that are out there and to, and to join the conversation. You know, the future of AI, it's, it's not some predetermined thing. We're, we're shaping it right now through through our choices, our actions, everything. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. It's, it's easy to get swept up in all the, the hype or the fear, you know, around AI, but, but ultimately it's, it's up to us to decide what kind of future we want to, to create. You know, do we want AI used mostly for, for surveillance and control or, or as a tool to, to empower individuals and, and encourage creativity and, yeah. and solve, you know, social problems. These, these aren't easy questions, but they're, they're questions that, that we just, we can't afford to ignore. Exactly. I mean, AI is, it's here, it's here to stay yeah. and it's, it's going to transform our world in ways we can't even, you know, fully grasp yet. The, the question is what kind of transformation do we want? What kind of future are we, are we building? You know. Those are those are questions worth pondering for yeah. sure, and and maybe as we you know continue to explore the world of AI, we'll we'll find some answers that are that are both hopeful and and realistic. That's the the beauty of you know a deep dive like this. It's it's not about finding all the answers. It's it's about asking the right questions and about starting a conversation, it's a conversation to... that that needs to happen now. You know, <laughs> before before it's too late. Absolutely. So as we wrap up our, our deep dive into the world of Peter Thiel and AI, we'll, we'll leave you with this. Think critically, question those assumptions, and, and imagine the future you, you want to create. The future of AI, it's, it's in our hands. That's a, that's a great note to end on. Thanks for joining us you know, on this journey. It's been a pleasure exploring these you know, complex issues with you. Until next time. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and and keep imagining all the possibilities for